Pacific Drums and Percussion presents Get It Started with Daru Jones and Daru's special guest, Grammy-winning DJ and producer, DJ Scratch. And now, live from the Flamingo Club in downtown Nashville, let's get it started. Dowry Jones, we're live in Nashville, Tennessee. Pardon the delay, we had some technical difficulties. You know, like when you're doing the first show, you're gonna always, you know, have those things happen. But thank you guys for being patient with us. Shout out to DW, um, PDP Drums. Um, we're here, this is the first episode. Get it started with yours truly. Yes, it's a nice day outside. And yeah, I'm glad, it's such an honor to have, to be able to, you know, um, talk about some things, you know what I'm saying? And we got, we got a lot to cover today. So um, this first episode is called How Can I Give, Create My Own Sound? You know what I'm saying? And that's, a, that's definitely a good topic. You know what I'm saying? As, as we know, nowadays, you know, we're not just drummers. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we're also instr- instrumentalists, and our drum is a voice. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important what I've learned and where I'm at um, with my career right now. Just I, I'm thankful that I've been able to build, you know, a sound and, and an awareness um, from just from the setup, as y'all can see. See the the, the the tubs over here. Um, actually, right now we're displaying my signature set, my signature series kit with PDP, the Darwin Jones DJ and Y, Darwin Jones the Joker, and yeah, it's, it's a it's a compact vibe. You know what I'm saying? It's something that you can just you know, you can three cases, you can take it on the streets. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's built for your compact situation, and it's also built you know for for big and and live you know venues. Um, doesn't matter if this kit will work for you. Um, basically, just to talk about my setup, as y'all can see, it's a little bit differently. As y'all see the angles, you know what I'm saying? Everything is, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, basically, the inspiration comes from um, I play traditional grip, which is, let me show y'all. So there's two, two grips. This is the mass grip because you know, when you're left and right, everything is, is the same match. And then traditional, is, this is the grip right here. And this is pretty much what they use, you know, for like marching band and like a lot of the old school drummers like um, Buddy Rich, um, Gene Cooper, you know what I'm saying? And I, that's that's who I first saw, you know, using this grip. And it was it was really cool. I was very fascinated. I remember coming up in church and um, seeing some of my older mentors and, it was it was it was it was like a new thing just seeing them you know with the grip switching it this way. I was like, man, I want I want I want to try that as well. And I never forget when I when I got hit to or get got exposed to the Buddy Rich Memorial Series. Um, they had a volume one through four, and I think um, one of my mentors he gave me volume two in that Pacific volume. It was um, Vinny Caliuta, Dave Buckle, and Steve Gadd, <laughs> and that just really really blew my mind because you know I came up. My beginning is when I started playing drums, you know, I started in church. My mom and dad, they're both musicians. Rest in peace, dad. I lost them a few years ago. But yeah, um, you know, back 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 in the days, a lot of gospel drummers, I didn't see anybody playing traditional. I mean, playing, yeah, playing traditional. They all played mass groups, so it was really cool. It was one of my older mentors put me onto the Buddy Rich Memorial Series, and I saw the jazz drummers use this other grip, and I was like, man, I want to try that out. So I started you know, learning how to do the grip and playing gospel, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, you know, I, I feel like that helped me with my sound because I noticed as far as doing like the ghost notes, I feel like it was something that I was able to get a little bit more um, when I switched the grip to traditional. I don't know what it was, but it just seemed like the touch, I had a little bit, a little, a lot more um, control. But, you know, to each his own. Like for, for five, I learned traditional, I, I played match grip. And um, I, I, I did the same thing. I, I did all of the ghost notes that way. But for me, it just seemed like traditional was allowed me to be a lot more uh, flexible. And I actually go between both grips. Like sometimes when I'm when I'm trying to get more pow- power, when I'm doing rock and roll, or I, I would switch between grips, you know what I'm saying, just to get that more power. I just think for me, the mesh grip gives me a lot more power. But yeah, so we're here. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to chime in. I'm, I'm just... Checking in on the on the on the on the chat. Mike Smith. Thank you again. And the D PDP got some cool swag. It's 
it's funny, like, um, I had the opportunity to go out to Oxnard, you know, to the to the factory. And I remember when I got the tour, they took me to the swag shop. And I was like, yo, I need some of them to some of them shirts. So <laughs> big ups to PDP, you know what I'm saying? DW. What I like about the company to me, they are the Rose Voice of Drums, you know what I'm saying? Like when I first got hit to DW drums, like everything about the company was always high quality, like the highest quality. And they would come out with these um promotional VHS tapes. I know y'all might be too young for that, you know what I'm saying? But when I came up, we had VCRs, you know what I'm saying? And there was there were these good, you know, um that's how we watch movies through through VHS tapes. And I remember the DW, they would always make these really cool um promo um, um videos that would feature Terry Bozio and all of the artists that played um the the, the company at the time. And yeah, every, it was always like top, you know, top of the line and you know, I just I'm, I'm very um, glad that they've modernized, even with the PDP. Because even when I heard about the PDP line, I know that that particular line was was built for. I'm not sure if it was built. They wanted to make a, a high quality kit, but it was not as expensive. Because as y'all know, DW, you know, the drums can be very pricey. But you, 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 whatever you know, you get what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you put it, you you know, like if it's something that's expensive. More than likely, it's going to last a long time. So, anyway, the PDP, I think the PDP was designed to be more more affordable, but still top of the line. So, shout out, you know, to PDP, um, and with you know, and and what they have with DW. So, yeah. So today we're here to talk about how can I create my own sound. Do we have any questions so far? I'm looking on the chat. PDP drums for life. Brit, I'm gonna try to say these names. And pardon me if I mess them up. <laughs> so I see Mike Smith. I see um, Christopher Simpson. And yo, you guys are free to ask, ask any question. Y'all are free to ask any questions. And um, yeah, this is kind of weird because we're we in this quarantine time and, you know, I'm, I'm by myself doing the show <laughs> along with, you know, the help with, with, um, with my DW rep Jewel, she she's helping out, and we got we got we got an amazing special guest on my big brother from New York on DJ Scratch. He's going to be jumping in real soon, so y'all stay tuned for that. But it's just weird to just be in the setting, intimate, and just me alone. So part of me, you know, for the for the for the mistakes. But yeah, so basically, this show is streamed live from a place called Flamingo Club. It's in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, it's an amazing venue. It's been around, I think, for a little over a year. And um, yeah, it's really cool. It reminds me of, of like New York, you know, because I moved I moved to Nashville from New York, and I was trying to, you know, Nashville got its own thing, you know what I'm saying? But I was like, man, it'd be cool to find something that kind of remind me a little hipster of, of the New York vibe. And this this club has it's got that vibe. And big thanks to Angela, you know what I'm saying, and the staff for allowing me to stream here at the Flamingo. Um, so when things start opening back up, this is the place to come because they have amazing amazing food and. The ambience is really cool. Like they got it, they got a really nice um flamingo club. So back to the topic. We're talking about getting this. How can I create my own sound? So I'm just gonna look at some of the questions. So Britt, what's a good way to warm up Metrodome or Jam to Tracks? That's a good question. So Britt wants to know what's a good way to warm up. Now, in my young, my young. Cause I, I started playing when I was four years old, but when I, in my young teenage years, you know, I, I, I miss those days where I would go practice every day. Like my mom, she, 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 um, she was secretary at the church. So she got, she had access to get in the building, you know what I'm saying? So every time my mom would go there, it was like once a day, I would go with her and I was like, can I just practice drums? And I would, I miss those days. Cause basically, um, at that time I was inspired by, a lot of the jazz drummers where they would just do open solos. So I remember, I remember getting the Terry Bozio solo drums, VHS tapes, and I also got the Peter Erskine, Time People Does Everything, all the tapes that was out on DCI. I don't know if you guys are hip to, you know, to that company, but DCI, you know, they pretty much made instructional videotapes for a lot of my heroes, and I had all of those. And what I was fascinated by those, um, those drummers, they they specialized on just playing drums and doing a solo without any other instrument um, without any other instrumentation. You know what I'm saying? It was no melodic. The drums were the only melodic instrument. So that's one of the things that I used to I just used to learn. 
uh, how can I tell a story? You know, tell a story. Like when you listen to drum solos from the great Steve, is there, there's a beginning and there's an end. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I learned. I, 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 I was challenging myself just to go inside and see what type of story that I can, I can tell. And basically what I would do is, um, I didn't have a metrodome at the time, but I would just use my hi-hat as my metrodome. So basically, you know, maybe I can, I can show you guys. Just give me one second. So basically, my metrodome was just a hi hat. So I would just keep this going. And then I would try to tell a story. Like a part of response. Like, so that was that was my metrodome, and that's pretty much that's what I used to practice, just trying to be able to you know, do a solo using a hi-hat as a metrodome. Because I think it's very important. I think it's very important, even when you're doing solos, even even in the context, the musical context, you want to give the people some type of pulse. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if nobody's bobbing their head and they can't feel your pulse, then you kind of lose everybody. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that's the type of drum that I want to do. And that's what I saw coming up watching guys like um, Steve, Steve Gadd and those particular drummers. You know, they were groove drummers, but they still solo where you can still feel like some type of pulse. And, um, and then eventually, you know, um, I started just putting on my favorite track, you know, whatever I was listening to. At the time, I was exposed to hip hop. So a lot of times I would just try to play along with those, you know what I'm saying? Put my headphones on and I could, I could, be, I could, I could be in Michael Jackson's band. You know what I'm saying? I can play... You know, Michael Jackson, but at that time I was listening to a lot of gospel, so it was Rand Salin, Clark Sisters, you know, Winders and all of those, you know what I'm saying, those 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 um gospel legends. And I basically just play along. And then sometimes I would try to figure out, um, because the drummers they had already did their fields in the recording. So I always try to figure out what kind of fields could I do on my own that that you know that will enhance, not take away, but you know, complement the music. So to me, I just think that it's good to 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 be able to practice with a metrodome, and also not be stuck to that. Because as you know, sometimes when we're playing gigs, we 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 don't have that click track. You know what I'm saying? So what are you going to do? You know, if you don't have a metrodome, you're here to keep time. We are the timekeepers. Our job is very important, as y'all know. So, you know, it's very important to to, to learn both sides of it. And I and I feel like um, it's, it's it's not that one is better, but just do what works for you. You know what I'm saying? Learn both sides. That way, when you put in a setting where you don't have a click track, you, you can still be on. Because I remember when I came up in church, you know, um, just like the movie Whiplash. I don't know if you guys seen the movie called Whiplash, but there was a segment where the, the drummer was getting ridiculed, basically, because he was either dragging the beat or he was playing too fast. And I remember in church, that was a big thing, you know, like if, if you was dragging the beat behind too much, you would be getting slayed off and they would call the next drummer to take your place. That only had to happen to me one or two times and, I was like, I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be, you know, be in that, that situation again. So, um, so who did that, that answer the questions? Let's move on to the next one. Let's see. When you play drums. Christopher Simpson, when you play drums, do you like, do you think like a percussion player? That's a good question. So Christopher Simpson wants to know, when I play drums, do I think like a percussion player? Yes, I do. Actually, nowadays, because... Basically, like, my career has evolved. I started playing gospel as a young young kid, you know what I'm saying? Then eventually, I asked all the mentors, they put me on to, got to jazz. I got into that, and I, I was playing the fusion for years, you know what I'm saying, that vibe. And then at the same time, I was influenced by hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? Then I started wanting to know who were the producers because I was fascinated by the production because a lot of times the music that I was checking out, the hip-hop guys, some things that they were saying were very, very, you know, parental. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it wasn't anything that I can, I can, you know, like if my mom was finding out I was listening to that, my parents, they would be like, what are you doing with your life? But it was pretty, it was pretty much a no-no. So basically, I was able to tune out the, the, the lyrics and just chime in with the producers. So I was just like, okay, I started finding out who were the producers, like Dr. Dre. He um, was from a group called NWA um, from the West Coast. And then I would eventually get exposed to, like, DJ Premier from Gangstar. 
one of my favorite producers, as well as Pete Rock, um, Jay Diller, then DJ Scratch, who's one of our guests. It's going to be time in there really soon. Um, so yeah, so just just to, to 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 go along with the question, um, as a percussionist, the music that I'm playing nowadays, like I became, that's why I was going with, with, with what I was trying to say was, I went from gospel to jazz, from jazz to becoming this hip hop guy, and when you when you playing that type of music, it's it's pretty much bare bones. Like you, we're just playing like drum loops, and a lot a lot of the, a lot of the producers they were sampling like Clyde Stubblefield. You know what I'm saying? Like like the James Brown breaks. And that was that was like the thing, you know, but it was just these repetitive loops playing over and over, which didn't require a lot of notes, you know what I'm saying? You didn't need a lot of drums, you know, to play this stuff. So that particular music sometimes have percussive things. And when producers they're, they're producing their tracks, they add all these little elements. Cause there's like there's like layers, you know what I'm saying? Like they may have a drum loop, they may snag from like Clyde or whoever they were sampling from. And then it would add these other percussive sounds on top, you know what I'm saying? So eventually, that's one of the things that I feel like um, one of my specialties and why I feel like people may even hire me because they like, you know, Daru plays, plays attention to detail. I think it's very important to pay attention to detail, regardless of what genre that you're doing, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if um, try to see the original, the original recordings and see what the composer did, because when people come, come out to those shows, they want to hear what they heard on the record. You know what I'm saying, and if they don't hear that, you know you 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 may you you know you may lose a couple fans. But I think for for what I was trying to do, um, I always want to respect the original co composers' material. So that's what I did. So when I would hear the producers adding those percussive things, I would then you know find out what that sound was, and then I would add it to my set. Um, I don't have any percussion with me today, but you know you can get tambourines like LP. I'm LP artists. They have cowbells, you know what I'm saying? And, and these are some exclusive treats. I can't talk about those, but stay tuned. But yeah, I'm an LP artist, so that's that's a little that's a little secret. But yeah, so just find out what those sounds are, you know what I'm saying? And just try to implement that while you're playing. Because if you're playing a simplistic um, loop, you know, you should be able to add percussive sound, like a, 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 a block, a wood block. And yeah, so like that's what I'm thinking when I'm playing the type of music that I'm, 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 I'm covering live, I'm, I'm, become, I'm a drummer and also a percussionist. So if that answer that question, I think it's very good. If you're not playing hip hop, whatever the music is, if you have the, if you have the luxury of having a percussion player, that's amazing because that's your live click track. <laughs> that's your live click track and that would allow you as drummers to, to not have to rely on playing all the time. You can let the percussionist do his thing. You know what I'm saying? You come in when you can and that's that question. So the next question by Britt. What's your top three influence influences drummer wise early in your career? That's a really good question. Um, one of my influences, I gotta go all the way back to my beginnings in gospel. His name is Dana Davis from Detroit, Michigan. He's one of my favorite drummers, you know what I'm saying? And then Dana played with this group called the Winans. The Winans, they're a legendary gospel group. They've been around forever, you know what I'm saying? And um, Dana was their live drummer. Their studio drummer was a, a, this guy by the name of Bill Maxwell. And Bill Maxwell was a producer for for those, you know, for those Linus records, which bugged me out. Like, that was my first time seeing a drummer actually being a producer of, of, of and composing music. You know what I'm saying? So it was really cool. So Dana is one of my influencers. Um, another influencer was definitely Benny Caliuta. As y'all don't know, y'all, I'm sure y'all know who he is, you know what I'm saying? He's a genre bending drummer. Like, what I like about Benny, he can play in any situation, you know what I'm saying? And, and you, 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 he has a sound. He has a sound that, that definitely coincides with our subject, creating my own sound. Um, yeah, Benny, one of the things that I admired about Benny um, was his setup. And what I liked about Benny's setup, he always had the china on the left-hand side. I thought that was very cool. That's the first time I seen somebody, you know, with the china. And um, yeah, like a good example as far as going into coinciding with the topic. So I want to talk about like the Buddy Rich Memorial Series Volume Two. If you guys haven't saw it, and I'm sure it's available on YouTube, Buddy Rich Memorial Volume Two is Steve Gadd, Dave Weckl, and Vinny Caliuta. And if you watch that 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 concert, they're all playing Yamaha drums. They were all Yamaha endorsers. 
the Dorsey's. Um, they all had similar looking kits. The colors were different, but how how you able to determine um, each drummer was the way that they tuned their drums, and also the 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 the, the, the heads. Now I noticed that um, on Vinny's kit he had the black all heads. That was the first time I seen that on the on the on the kit. So he was using a ring. He's a Remo artist. Shout out to Remo. I'm a, I'm a Remo artist as well. But Vinny had the Remo heads. Weko had, I think, the coded ambassadors, and I can't remember what Steve Gat was using. But the tuning, the tuning, that's what gave them each their identity and their sound. You know what I'm saying? And and, and you can tell each of those drummers had to be had to have been inspired by Steve Gat. You know what I'm saying? Steve Gat inspired all, a lot of the greats, including including myself. So basically, um. Yeah, that's that's just 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 to tune in. Um, Vinny was my second influence, biggest influence, and my third. I want to say, how can I, let me think about that one real quick. Um, man, that's a good question. Steve Gad. I guess I can say Steve Gadd. <laughs> Steve Gadd is another was another influence, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, because I remember at the same time when I got hit to Vinny Caliuta, the same mentor, they put me under Tony Williams and, and Jack D. Jeanette. That drummer was amazing too. Um, but the, the swing stuff kind of went over my head. It was very advanced. You know, I didn't really I didn't really figure that out until later on. Um, but all the chops that they were doing were crazy, but I just as far as like learning to swing, just was so advanced. But yeah, um, I want to say, you know, you say um, Dana Davis from Detroit, definitely Benny Caliuta, and then we'll say, we'll say Steve Gadd. Stuart Copeland is another big influence too as well. Stuart Copeland, he plays with a group called, called Police. Very amazing drummer. And what I like about Stuart, he has his own sound. And he has his own setup. He had the road of times, you know what I'm saying? So that also co coincides, you know, with our topic today. Um, so I guess we, we should probably bring on our guests. I'm looking at the chat. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Dennis Chambers. Dennis Chambers was another one of my favorite drummers as well. Like, I checked out all of those guys. Dennis Chambers, Steve Smith, um, Peter Erskine, Omar Hakeem was another favorite. So I, it, it, that's a really hard one. Um, Will, Will um, Kennedy was another 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 one. So that third one is a really hard one. But let's just let's put a two. Let's just go with let's just go with Danny Davis and Vinny Caliuta for at least the two influences of my earlier career. Um, and so yeah, for some more questions. And again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I know we we were off to a late start today. We were just trying to. You know, figure some things out on the technical side, but right now we want to bring up our guest. He's a good friend of mine. My, we actually call each other twin brothers, although he's a lot he's, he's older than me. But it's my good friend from New York. His name is DJ Scratch. One of the best DJs, you know. what I'm saying definitely, definitely top one of the top five DJs, and he's probably like out of one out of three. You know, what I'm saying um, my good friend DJ Scratch. You may you may have seen him with a group called EPMD. EPMD is one of my favorite um, hip hop groups coming up. They were very different, you know what I'm saying? They were a duo, a duo group, and, and Scratch was the DJ, and I think he produced some of the records. And he's all um, Scratch all also, he's a platinum, multi-platinum producer as well. And I thought he would be very good for this first this first episode because he's also a producer. And one of the things that we want to focus on being authentic, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember when I started getting exposed to the hip hop community, it was all about have your own identity, you know what I'm saying? I remember back in the days, if you were caught, if you came in the room and you had on the same outfit, you know what I'm saying? That was a problem. They, they, they had a terminology called, don't bite off me, so which means don't copy off me. <laughs> and I remember even, even, even in grade school, you, you didn't want to go to school and see somebody with the same outfit you had on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a problem. Same thing when you go to the award, the Grammy Award shows. It's like everybody spends all this money because they want to they wanna stand out. And I think it's very important, you know, that, that that we look for ways to stand out and have an identity. It's cool to mimic, you know, your, your heroes and all that, because I've done it when I was a kid. But I, I knew eventually when I got older, I want to be able to be recognized for something that I that I you know that I brought to the table, and that's the type of drummer that I wanted that I wanted to be. And um, 
Stretch is also a drummer, you know what I'm saying? So I thought he would be a great candidate, you know, for this first topic. So without any further ado, let's bring on our guest, DJ Stretch. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's going on? Yo. Can you hear me? Check one, two. Sure. What's going on, everybody? Speaking of drummers, this is one of my tracks where, where I was playing the drums on it. Let me pull up the YouTube page so I can see. What's up, everybody? Uh, Christopher Simpson, what's going on? Britt Harley, what's going on? What's happening, everybody? Daru, so what's going on, man? Congratulations. Ooh, thank you, my brother. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Come on the show and um, give us some of your words of wisdom. Um, yeah, bro. Big shout out to what you've done for the hip hop community. You know what I'm saying? I remember it. I think it was so, so what you're saying. Is that EPMG record? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. I'll never forget when I saw that video and um, I was like, yo, who is that DJ? And I was a kid. But he was just like so ill with it. And, and, and ever since then, I, I've been a fan. I've been a fan. And it's crazy. Like, it wasn't until later on, you know, you know, through my career, I didn't even realize some traction you have produced. I'm like, dang, that's a that's a scratch record. Because I know you you work with Buster Rhymes too, right? Yes, I, I, I man, the, the bulk of his work, I actually created, you know, that Buster Rhymes sound. When, you know, when people hear beats and they be like, "Yo, that sounds like a Buster Rhymes beat," it's actually a DJ scratch beat because I created the sound. So I created wow. that flip, that flip mode sound. Oh my god! So that's major kudos because I'm telling you all right. He's definitely one of my favorite MCs. I had an opportunity to meet Bus um, several years back. Um, it was for a showcase with Liam Bailey, and it was Salam. It was actually Salam Radio Showcase in New York, and Salam was like, "Yo, we got a special guest coming out. He's going to please going to join me." And Buster Rhymes came and jumped on my drum kit and played, and I was, I was my like I was I was bugging out. I never forget after the performance, Bus was like, "Yo, you flat you flatline that drum kit." <laughs> Bus is like, he's, he's so easy. He was like, you flat, he was like, you flatline that set. And then Buster, Buster Brown actually, actually made me do a water shot with him because I'm not a drinker. He was like, yo, let's do shots. And I was like, I don't yeah. drink, but do a water yeah. shot. Yeah, he, yeah, he do the same thing with me because I don't drink. So when he wanted, when he wanted, you know, uh, celebrate something. So like, if, you know, if one of, one of the albums went platinum or gold, you know, we celebrate, but he know I don't drink. So I, I'll do a water shot. Yeah, that's crazy. So I never forget. I was like, "Bust!" I was like, "You're one of my favorite MCs." I was like, "Man, how do you, yo, just your, your, your rhyme play?" And he was like, "Well, you know, I started playing drums first. And when he said I started, when, when he said he was a drummer, that cracked my head. I was like, "That makes total sense because the way he raps, it's like a drummer." You Absolutely. So to have DJ Stress, who's a drummer as well, cultivate that sound for Buster Rhymes, like, wow, that's 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 amazing. Kudos, bro. Amazing. Yeah, the first the first time I, I seen him jump on the drums, I was like, okay, I, I totally understand it. So so with him, you know, you know, I, I always challenged him. I always challenged him. Like, so I, I give him a beat where, you know, where I know only he can do it, you know, like as far as I'm like, yo, I want you to rhyme how the drums go. He gets it because he's a drummer. Mm. You know, so that's what you know, he, wow. he does the fast, the fast rhyming, but he's so, you know. He 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 rhymes so fast, but you know, in certain songs, but you hear every word clearly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yep. so I would challenge him. You know, so when I so when we did uh the song "Give Me Some More," I was just thinking. I was thing. like, <laughs> so I told him, I said, "Yo," so I would just give him direction. You know, I was like, "Yo, rhyme." I want you to rhyme to the drums. Do what the drums do lyrically, vocally. Do the do what the drums do, and that's you know that's how I work. That's how we always work. Yo, that give me some more. If y'all ain't heard that, go on, you, go on YouTube right now. That beat was so epic, and it was so ahead of time, because I don't know any producers that was really doing that. Would that be considered a trap? What, what would that be considered? Nah, it was just, you know, 
it was the sound that Timberland got popular for. It, right. We never we never really named the sound of anything, honestly. And um and the crazy thing is I made that beat like I made that beat in the early 90s, like maybe like 91. And wow. this is before Timberland even even popped off. Wow. And and then so later on, so so when we were working on Buster's second album, no, his third album, mm-hmm. he was like, "Yo, man, you still got that beat?" I'm mm-hmm. like, "Which beat?" He was like, "Yo, the one that sounded like the Timberland bounce." I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." So I pulled it up, and uh, and and he did give me some more. But I made that wow. beat a long time ago. But wow. at that time, nobody was nobody was singing over beats like that or rapping over beats like that. So, you know, so when I gave it to Buster, you know, when I first started working with him in '95. He didn't understand that bounce at that mm. time. So what? What made you? What, what made you compose that? That type of beat, like, because nobody was really doing. Nobody was doing that. Well, I'm a DJ. You know what I mean. So if you know, if you ever seen me DJ, you know my my, you know I'm 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 really known for like doing things visually that you would hear, that you would hear. Like if you hear something like uh, the record says Friday the Thirteenth, I'm gonna play Jason. I will put the Jason mask on with the machete and start cutting on the turntables oh with it. <laughs> so, so I, you know, so I, I approach I approach producing the same way that I DJ. So when when um you know I was just watching watching the movie Psycho one day and uh, it came on. I wasn't even watching. I wasn't planning on watching Psycho. It just happened to come on late at night while I'm in the studio, and um I'm like, you know what? Damn, I got that soundtrack. So the scene when you know he's about to stab her in the shower. Mm-hmm. That 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 music came on like nee, 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 Oh my god. <laughs> you know and I, and I, and, I, and I have a crazy soundtrack collection so I definitely had the soundtrack so you know I just put the record on and and you know you could approach that you could approach the loop any way you wanted but I wanted to approach the loop how the stabs in the no pun intended the stabs in the rec- in, the, in the strings were mm-hmm. flowing so I'm like you know I want to do the drums like that, and and that's how that's how the beat came to life. Yo, the the the, the, the dope, and now it makes sense that you're a drummer because the dope, the dopest part is on that fourth bar loop. It's like yeah, you like you go you go busy like it was a live drummer. I was like, okay, now that makes sense. And and I play and I played the bass line like the same way. So when I made the beat, I'm like, yo, bus, I want you to rhyme like that, like how the drums are. So he 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 jumped right in, like because he's a drummer, so he gets it. So he wow. jumped right in. He jumped right in and rode that beat. Wow. Now when you when you picture your sounds, you know what I'm saying? Because I just I guess just to coincide with the with with with, with the lesson, how to I create my own sound. Um and being that you was definitely in, in, in the influence in the flip mode sound, which is an is a huge sound because what you had you had Rod Digger. Yeah, Rod started? Digger, Rod Digger, that? Rampage, Lord Have Mercy, Baby Sham, Split Star. Yo, that was an era. That was an amazing era in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like the quality. You know what I'm saying? Of the mixing, of the everything, was just it was just it was a thing. It was a thing, and that it makes sense. And like like, how did you approach? Like, what was your approach on on on, on those on some of the productions on, on those tracks? Um, just you know, I I, I always like um. Honestly, I always start with the drums. <laughs> the drums is a foundation. So, mm-hmm. you know, and then, you know, and, you know, just, 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 just to go back, you know, like, you know, flip mode was, that was 97, 98 at that time. But, you know, Buster was, his first album was 96. So mm-hmm. when we got to the, to the whole flip mode album in 98, um, I, you know, I just, uh, just came into myself as a, as a producer, you know, when I came out with EPMD in 1988, you know, I was I produced on a couple of tracks, but you know, I, I didn't really have time to to focus on producing because we was on tour so much, like four or five months wow. out of the year. So when my group split, you know, I had more time to focus on production and uh and just you know, I always like uh, you know the drums and bass lines. Bass lines is basically the the background of the groove for me. So you can have any type of you know, horns, strings, drums, but that bass line makes it complete. So I always totally. focus totally. on the bass and the drums. So yeah. um so if you got if you got uh so I would play I would play live bass and I would just not not even with my with my guitar, I would just take a bass sound, one bass note, and play them in the in the sixteen pads. Mm. 
and just make my own melodies at wow. that time. This is before I, I didn't even have a keyboard at the time. I just used the MPC uh, 60 as a as a uh, as a keyboard mm. as a keyboard so you know the drums and the bass is is always the 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 main elements of the beat and anything you put in between it if you put the right bass and play the right bass on it it's gonna make great music so i would just take like uh and, and at that time you know at that time uh in the 90s bismarcky had just got sued for uh, <laughs> sam- and shout to bismarcky biz get better please get better Yes. So at that time, you know, Biz had got sued for for uh, for sampling, for sampling something and, and not clearing it, mm. and that and that actually changed the changed the uh, the entire uh, the, the music industry as far as like sampling sampling for hip hop. Wow. It changed it forever. So mm-hmm. when Biz got sued, it scared everybody. Like it, you know, so it, so it was it was Biz Markie when that happened with him, and when James Brown completely dissed hip hop and told told hip hop to get off his tip. I don't know if you remember that song. No, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. You just put, you just cracked my head on that one. Is that a, that's on a record? Yeah, that was a song he did with Full Force. It was called um damn what's the name of that song? Um man I can't remember the name of the song. Wow I'm real. I'm real. That was the name of the song. So at, so at that time um James Brown which is basically if it wasn't for James Brown, it would be it wouldn't be any hip hop period, no, no. because every record from, you know, from the time of sampling in in the uh, mid eighties to, um, you know, f- for the next like fifteen years was all James Brown. Everybody had a funky drummer mm-hmm. or any type of James Brown in their hip hop record once they started sampling. Yes. And um, when he made that record with Full Force and and told hip hop to get off his tip. It crushed. It crushed all of us. Like, you know, James Brown is our hero. How could he do this to us? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a bummer. You know, you know, it, and and at that time, you know, the, the artists weren't. There weren't any uh, sample laws at that mm. time. So, all of the stuff we were sampling, the artists weren't getting their their publishing for it at that time. Mm. Gotcha. We we didn't know. We didn't know the business at that time like that. Mm. But you know, we just always took it as approach with anything. So it's like, yo. You know, if I owe you money, you should like you don't have to make it public. You can just reach out to me. You know, mm. so that's how. So that's so how that, we felt. Yeah, yeah, what you gonna say? So is that is that the reason why um, producers started chopping up drums instead of using the actual drum loops? Um, kind of, kind of. So, so, so when that happened, so when James Brown, you know, he told hip hop to get off his tip. Everybody stopped sampling James Brown because you know he wanted his money and and he he deserves it. You know what I mean? He wanted his money, but we just didn't like how he did it. You know what I mean? So we stopped sampling James Brown. James Brown was off the list of sampling. Like <laughs> we're not sampling James Brown no more. He told us to get off his tip. Okay, fine. So we started digging and finding other type of music. So we started you know going going into uh like like our mother's jazz records and, mm. and and other funk records that was inspired by James Brown. And we started finding uh, classical music, orchestra music, um, symphonies and stuff like that. So the, the reason, if James Brown didn't tell hip hop to get off his tip, hip hop would have been dead 20 years ago. Oh my God. It'd have been dead. It'd have been over. It'd have been a fad as they was you know trying to say back then. But because he told us to get off his tip, we re- we we started finding other music, and we started uh, expanding our techniques to make hip hop beats. So we didn't we didn't have to sample really s- sample loops anymore. That's when we stopped sampling loops, and we would just take one sound. So so me myself, I didn't want to sample James Brown no more, and I didn't want to sample all the other stuff that everybody else was sampling at that time, like the Pete Rocks, the Molly yeah, Mall. So you, so you was definitely trying to create your own sound. Yes, I was trying to create my own sound. And, and, and like I said, I always approach it like how I DJ. Uh, DJing, my my style is my style. I didn't, I didn't, my style doesn't come from anybody else. I didn't watch anybody and study their style and then make it my own. I, like my style is my style, something that I came up with. So I wanted to approach beat making the same way. So I'm like, I don't want to do what Pete Rock is doing. 
I don't want to do what Premier is doing. I don't want to do what Molly Mall is doing. Yeah. I don't want to do what Dr. Dre is doing. So I said, you know, I'm going to just take like little sounds, little stab noises, horns, and take them and put them in these in the 16 pads and take one sound and just make music with that one sound. Turn that one wow. sound and just make my own music with that one sound and then play bass to make it to, you know, to back up that sound and have some hard drums. And that that's how I created my style. That's amazing. That's a major story. So give it up for DJ Scratch, you know what I'm saying? Giving us some really good history. Actually put me on to something I didn't even know about the James Brown record, which I got to go check out. But that's amazing. It, it definitely goes and it coincides with, with, with our topic today. And like like I was telling them earlier, when I, when I got more into the hip hop community, even coming up, that was that was a big thing. Like you was like no biting, you know what I'm saying? Like right, no, no biting allowed. That, that was that, that was an unwritten rule in hip hop. Oh my god! So that's that stuck with me, and I brought that over to everything that I do personally. You know, because um, image is everything, and I just think that nowadays everybody can go on anybody can go on YouTube and they can become this this thing. But you know, at, at some point, you know, what I'm saying I, I think if you want to stand out, you definitely you know. Go inside and just find out what, what your special technique is. You know what I'm saying? That's what we all that's what we all done. And and that's hopefully what, what we want to do with the show. We want to want to try to encourage people to go, 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 go inside because we're all different. And I remember when I came up, when I would go to the drum stores, you know what I'm saying? I have my heroes that I admire, and I wanted to get what they use, but at the same time, my body type is different. Our, all of our body types are different. And some some of us we, we you know we're skinny. You know what I'm saying? Or some of us, you know, we all we all we all build differently. And if, if I get it, if I get a drumstick and it's too if it's too heavy for me, I'm gonna be fighting myself while I'm playing. So what I would do as a kid, when I would go to the store, when they came up with signature drumsticks, I would try every stick that they had and I would find out which one. Regardless if regardless if it was my hero stick or not. I think that's important nowadays for drummers to we want to keep the stores open, you know what I'm saying? Because it's 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 oversaturated as it is, and a lot of people are going out of business. That's because you know, with, with drummers and artists, we gotta we gotta consume. So I just right. my recommendations for for drummers and anybody that play anything outside of drums is try other things. You know what I'm saying? Like they they have all kind of drum heads. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these are signature. With my with, you know these are signature like my logo on top of these Remo heads, but um, they have coded. You know what I'm saying? They have black heads. It's all type of combinations. And right. there's so many things I haven't, there's so, there's so many ideas I haven't, even, haven't been done yet because everybody just kind of just sticking with what they see somebody else do or the tradition. But I just, I just advise drummers, you know, to, to develop your, to, if you want to develop your own sound, maybe try using um, a coated head on one drum and try a clear head, you know, just switch it up. Same thing with right. drumsticks. You know what I'm saying? They're all type of sticks. Like I have, I have a, um, a signature stick with, the head drumsticks is the DJ and Y. It matches the color of the drums. And that was the whole branding situation. And these are aluminum drumsticks. And I was told these last five times longer than a wood stick. That's so how. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 the same thing. Like as far as like even even with my drums, because every you know at that time, you know in the nineties, you know we used to go to you know we used to all go to the record conventions. There was this one record convention at the uh, Roosevelt Hotel, and. uh uh, on 43rd Street in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So that, that record convention would bring people from all over the world, like mm. producers and record collectors. So, you know, so I would run into Pete Rock there, run into Large Professor, you know, all of the great producers, they would all be there. You know, the whole Digging in the Crates crew. Um, wow, wow. Uh, everybody, even like Magic Mike from down south, from, from oh, Orlando. I know Magic, like, yeah, Magic Mike was dope. I remember him as a yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, that's my cousin. So, so wow. every yeah, so... You know, we, we would run to everybody there, and then it was just like you know, you know these these uh, record dealers they would sell the same record to uh, Premier, mm -hmm. and so they have like let's say they have ten copies of, of a particular album with a with an ill drum break on it, so they they wouldn't sell it to anybody. They wait until they see Premier, sell it to him, sell it to <laughs> Pete Rock, sell it to to uh, Diamond D, mm -hmm. sell it to to um, you know just all of the producers, Q Tip, sell it sell it to all of them so it became um a race to wow. whoever puts that record out first is the winner you know what i mean oh my god <laughs> so it became like that so you know you you know you spend like 60 dollars on an album 
and and it's like you you make a beat out of it and then but q-tip gets it out first because he you know <laughs> the album the album he's working on is coming out before everybody else's so he wins you know oh my god oh, and I and 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 you know i didn't like that i didn't, I didn't like that you know <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like that so i was like you know what i'm gonna stop going to these conventions i'm gonna stop going digging with with other producers especially all these super producers at that time and i said you know what i'm gonna just go make, make my own drums so while they were while everybody was using at the time uh the impeach the president drums mm. the the because they stopped using the funky drummer so they they discovered the impeach the president drums mm. they, they started sampling the, the uh the substitution drums by, Man, um, like, do you do you have you do you have you, do you have that can you play the impeach it's, it's a known, the president? Yeah, it's, it's a known. Y'all, when y'all hear this, y'all can recognize it. I'm yeah. Gay. And yeah. you just cracked my head on DJ Magic Mike because I remember as a kid he had this track called Bass. Yeah. It was a group, Bass. Group, 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 group. Yeah, that was that was like all. In, so back in the days, everybody had the booming systems in the ride. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they was playing the uh, Magic Mike records because he had a lot of bass. And that was that like the Miami. That was like the Miami sound. Absolutely, and all right. Let me let me. I have it right here. Hold okay, up, cool, cool. and peace the president. So this is the this is the the second most sampled drum break of all time. That and then everybody was sampling this break as well. Substitution. So this was the sec. This was the third most sampled drum break of all time so yeah. everybody was sampling that they were sampling uh a piece of president and they were sampling another drum break by the uh, by skull snaps mm. by the group skull snaps so every hip-hop record you know in the in the in the uh, mid mid to late 90s had those drums so i'm like you know what I don't want to do the rate. I don't want to do the rat race anymore. That you know the, uh, you know I, we all buying the same record, and then it's like Harry, ready, set, go, and you know. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'm gonna start making my own drums. So so I would just sample, you know. And at that time, I didn't even I didn't even have a drum set at that time. But I would go to the studio to the drum sets in the studio, and just tell the engineer, yo, just hit record, and I would I would hit the snare, I would tune it. A bunch of different ways tune it down tune it up i would put like a uh put my wallet on it hit the hit oh, the drums wow 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 yeah i know about that you know i would wow. scratch i would scratch the drum i would scratch it you know just make all these different sounds mm -hmm. with 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 the kicks and the snares and and make different hi-hats and record all of that so i was making my own drum kits back then and and this is in, in the 90s wow. and i would just record all of that and just sample what i wanted wanted for each particular beat because the the main thing like with with uh when when you know during the producer wars back then it was just like yo what drums are those and, you know it, <laughs> you know it might be you know so you like let's let's say like you're here like um uh, a smith and wesson record with with uh like soundboy burial mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know those drum that that drum break you yeah. know yo what drums is that so, you know so you you would tell you know your your fellow producer, but you wouldn't tell the average person what it was because you know it's all about you know these breaks are still about secrecy and all of that. Yes, so sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I don't want I don't want you to to know what it is because you're gonna go use it. You know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, it, but if you if you have depending on how ill your collection is, you know what the drum break is. But mm -hmm. every time somebody heard a, a a flip mode record, you could never identify the drums because they never came from records. Wow. So you just so you were Jimmy Jamming and Terry Lewis early. Yeah, so everybody's like, yo, what drums is though? Yo, what what album is that? I'm like, nah, it's not an album, man. That's those is uh it's my drum set. Man, you used to want, you could you got the splice packs back then. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, I was making my own sound packs back then, literally. Like I was making my own sound packs. Wow. Yo, that's some really that's some that's some good history. And um big shout out to Scratch, like I said, for what he's done for the community. That makes sense. Cause when you hear those flip mode records, they the drums do sound different. And I'm just, I'm just thinking too, like, like when you play the MPs to drums, just the frequencies. I wonder how did they how did they get the drums to sound that way? 
because even even those two breaks you just played, they just they just don't sound like you know what I'm saying. Like my, this this drum set don't sound like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I right. wonder how did they get it to sound that way, and it just it just they sound like a break. Like it sounds like a like like it sounds computerized almost. Right, right, that's right. But yeah, like so I would I would take like and sometimes. You know, it's it's about magic as well. Like, you know, you got to work magic on your drums. Sometimes, you know, I would use the same drums, but I would make them sound different. You know, mm. just just in the EQ. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll my my main uh, device was the Neve ten seventy threes. I will put always put that on my drums. Wow, wow. I will always put the Neve seventy threes mm. on my drums and and just make them sound different. You can. You can have the same drums and make it sound different, like three different ways, three different sounds. And uh, wow, yeah. So that's that's what I did. So with that being said, that's a good example of how you, how to create your own sound. Um, shout out to Scratch and there's other producers like that that he mentioned, like Premier and DJ Premier from Gangstar is another another um, you know what I'm saying great that has his own sound as well as Pete Rock. And like I said. Um, Scratch, you know, we all came from that community where that was the thing. You know, you didn't want to, you didn't want to have the same outfit on. You know what I'm saying? You didn't want to have the same chain on. Or that's you, right. Or you didn't even want to sound like the same this other person. If he was that's riding, right. it was, it was so. That's that's where we come from, and I think it's important. It's important, and I'm just gonna before we before we continue on because I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let Scratch get busy, but I'm I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna just give you an example of trying to get some other sounds off the drums. Oh, you know, some, somebody else had a question. Somebody had a question, too. Yeah, what's um, the question? Christopher, Christopher Simpson, why do some DJs struggle with playing with percussion players or drummers? Do you want to ask that question? you want to answer that question, Stretch? I will definitely answer that question. <laughs> because I have, I've, I have that same issue. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is the thing, like, with, um, when you're playing, when you're playing with, uh, you know, with, a, with, somebody doing percussion while you're live DJing the is usually the the person playing percussion doesn't know what the DJ is going to do next oh true true indeed so and you know usually you know sometimes you get on the stage with 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 a percussionist and it's you know there's there's no um chemistry and what and and what people have to understand with DJs, well, with a great DJ, you don't play the same set all the time. So you play according to the mood of the room. So if you play a song that you might think that's, you know, that might make the crowd go wow, and it doesn't work, you got to get that song off immediately and put something else on. Mm. Or, and, and sometimes you have a routine. So this is what, what usually happens, happens to me. And, and I'll, I'll tell the percussionist, stop playing for a minute. Because I don't want you to play through my transition. Right, 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 right. Because the transitions are so uh, so important when, when you're DJing a party. You know, it, it, so, for example, like, if somebody's on the mic, you know, like, let's say a host, and they're talking constantly through your set, and you, gotta, you have a routine that you know automatically when you do this routine, when you do this particular transition, the crowd is going to go crazy. Yeah. But... If somebody's talking through that transition, the crowd is gonna miss that big moment. Yes, sir. And it's the same thing when when somebody's playing percussion on stage with a DJ. If he's playing through that transition, the crowd is gonna miss that whole big moment. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's the reason why a lot of DJs don't, you know, they have a problem with that because the the, the percussionist is always supposed to follow the DJ, always right. watch the DJ. Right. And y'all got to have some type of chemistry before y'all start. You know, you just can't jump in and you, you got to you, you gotta give him some type of hand signal for him to stop. And you got to listen. You got to listen to the, to, the, to what's going on, too. Yeah, and you got to you gotta listen and pay attention because, you know, we, you know the, the last DJ that you played with might have stopped the record at a certain point. That might not be the same place where I stopped the record, you know? And it's crazy now that you mentioned. I remember we had the opportunity to to do a drum DJ thing a, um, a few times actually. Yeah. And I remember I had to learn too because 
scratch he can do it all by himself. He don't need he don't he don't need no enhancements, you know. What I'm like, <laughs> just just go through your YouTubes and watch Scratch Vision, you know what I'm saying? And you see, I mean, this guy's guy's won, you know, battles, you know what I'm saying? But even when I had opportunities, because that's one of my specialties, I play with DJs, pause. Um, but yeah, I, what I've what I've learned, even and it's just this goes with when I'm playing with artists as well. I'm watching, you gotta watch. You have a to watch. Of, a lot of musicians and drummers, we get it twisted. We feel like the the the, the song is all about us. And then we play all these notes and it's like, no, we're we're there to accommodate the person in front of us. So when I got a chance opportunity to work with scratch, because each each DJ is different. Some right. DJs they don't play the whole record, they may just play the beginning of the record and they may switch it quick. And then some DJs may play the record and then you just kind of know what they're gonna do next, but scratch. You know, you never know. You know what I'm saying? And, and you, and I just had, I had, I had to learn quick how he DJ. Like, okay, and what I, what I, I'm grooving. You know what I'm saying? I'm just watching his hands. You know, yeah, you have, yeah, you have to watch, man. You gotta you know. watch, and that's what I learned. And that's what when you're playing in these settings, you know what I'm saying? If, if you're not the MD or music director, you know you have to watch the music director because y'all may rehearse the song this way, but. The MD is in a in a spot, and, and people may in the audience they may be feeling good. The, the, the MD he may want to play that same section again, and if you're not watching, you can you're gonna it, miss it, you're right? Miss it. And if he was playing for James Brown, he was getting docked. You was getting docked. <laughs> you was getting docked. If you was playing with James and you didn't pay attention, and and and, 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 and you know what? And 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 I I definitely learned that from like from watching James Brown documentaries and all of that. Like mm. you know, like. They can do they can do uh, fifty shows, mm. and the, the the way they practice it, they might have done it the way they practice it one time out of fifty. Mm. You know, it's all about the mood of this. It's all about the moment. You know, it's all about the moment. And and uh, like like when I DJ when I was when I used to tour with Jay Z, Jay Z was Jay Z was basically, you know, we we would practice an entire show, right? Get the whole show down, but usually. That's never how the concert is gonna gonna turn out to be because, wow. you know, if, if in in football terms, Jay would call he would call a, an audible, mm. you know. So so for example, let's say we, we're planning on doing this one song, uh, two verses, the chorus, and then stop. Mm. He might do one verse, a chorus, and then stop. And you know, how, if you ever seen Jay Z perform, he's very laid back on stage. Mm -hmm. He's not animated. So those those uh, changes, it'd just be a move of his finger. Wow. He he won't go. Yo, stop that! Stop that! Yo, stop that! And and honestly, he will only do that with me because, you know, because because he's also a fan of of my work with EPMD. Mm. You know, Trust years you before, it. right? So he trusts, right? So he he never had to look back to me and go, Yo, scratch, stop that record. He would just do like a little. It, it'd be just one little finger, and mm. you. But you have to watch him, yes, sir. The whole show because he he might stop, and it could be just be in any little thing. You know, you you know, band members. Uh, a single would usually give this signal, mm. you know, the fifth signal to stop. Right, 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 right. With with Jay Z, it'd just be like a finger, and he, you know, his hand might be down to his <laughs> side, and. You won't see it, but but when he does it, the crowd see sees him put that finger out, and when he puts that finger out, mm -hmm. the music stops. It looks so incredible, you know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> to the crowd. Wow. But if you're not paying attention, mm -hmm. you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss the moment, and it's just it's it's, it's all bad after that. Oh my god! So That's a good so so as far as like a a, a, a percussionist playing with a DJ, mm -hmm. it's the same way. Mm. You're you're not the star of the show. You the DJ is, so you have to watch that DJ signals. You got to, and, and it might not be his hand signals because he's on the turntable. It might just be his eyes, like yo, you know, just any little thing. Right, right. That's a good That's a good. That's a good critique and observation. Um, I forgot to mention y'all the people that's asking questions. Y'all see the shirt that I'm rocking? Y'all have an opportunity to get these as well. Um, the more questions you ask, I don't know how we're gonna do it, but. You can definitely win some um, PDP swag, and they just popped up on the screen. Yeah, DW. I mean PDP DW. They got some cool stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a fashionable guy, so 
I wouldn't rock it if it wasn't cool. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> for those that ask, ask questions, you know, you, you definitely, you know, can, can, can have an opportunity to win some swag. Um, so, yeah, just to, go, just to go back, I want to jump on the drums and just kind of just show you some ideas on what I did to start experimenting with some sounds. Shout out to um, DJ Scratch. So I don't have the headphones on right now, so I'm just going off the cuff. So basically, I remember back in the days, we had these things called zero rings. Um, and they were like pretty much muff, they were muffling the drums down. Basically the same thing, what you what you could do if you had like um, a wallet. And basically, um right now my snare drum is tuned, you know, it's tuned like as a piccolo. I'm actually using the um, E-Panda. E Panda snare drum through the um, PDP. Piccolo is my Piccolo is my favorite drum. As y'all hear right now, it's got the high like that class level feel type of sound. So back in the days, sometimes the, the, the sound was a little, you know, the tone was a little piercing. So ways that we, we had to find all kind of ways to to muffle the sound down, and they had these these remote these zero rings you could put around the drum. And I don't have a silver ring, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my towel. And it was kind of kind of take away some of the overtone. That kind of take it took away too much, but probably like a rather right So y'all can hear the difference. And th that was one of the things, you know, drummers we would try to do it, also develop our own sound, even 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 in a recording um, situation. Because when you think of those records. Just like I was talking about in piece of precedence, the drums, like, I don't know, I don't know a drum kit that sound like that live, but whatever they did, I'm sure that they have some toys and a lot of people they use um gaff tape. You know, I've used gaff tape too to 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 um muffle down the drum sound. And um today, you know, there's a lot of companies coming out with, with some cool things. Um there's a company called Big Fast Snare Drum. I, I actually use some of their products too. Similar to like they have a lot of tamarines on their on their on their on their um on their equipment and I got these exclusive exclusive bits but yeah so all kind of things you can do to, to to develop your own sound so if I was using um a black remo head or even a coated I could still it's still it's still gonna be a different sound because the drum sound sometimes they're two ply which is like two heads together or sometimes they even even um the way that the the, the um Coded, the coded heads, they got they have a different sound. Each, each particular head got a different sound. So just different ways. Sometimes you can you can untune the, the snare drum and get a, a lower pitch. You know what I'm saying? But maybe next time try putting um not only your wallet, but maybe attach, you know, just some random some you know, I, I actually have these made by LP. They, these um you can they actually have magnets on them. Put it on the side. So at night, I have to like a tambourine to your snare And basically, this is the snare drum that comes with my with my signature kit. And some of the music that I play, like when I'm playing the hip hop music, a lot of the producers they don't use the same snare drum; they use other sounds. So I'm like, how can I replicate or have another snare option? So I would I would basically just tune. My second snare has like another option. That way, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 it can switch it up. And then I'm using, I have a, I have my, my signature hi-hats through um, Pisces percussion, I mean, Pisces cymbals, and it's the DJ's 45s, you know what I'm saying, they all 12 inch. And this particular sound reminds me of Nintendo. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nintendo, but the first Nintendo that came out, it was 8-bit, and the sound was really like teeny. Kind of remind me like an eight bit. It's unfinished, and there's a lot of holes, you know, in between that gives that gives gives it that sound. You know what I'm saying? But even even with this, so now I'm gonna add my you know my toy on top to give it another another type of sound. So now it's like a percussive hi hat. You know what I'm saying? So it's just different things. You don't have to do you don't have to do the same thing that I'm doing, but it's all kind of things you can do to create your own sound. Like what Scratch was saying when. When he started sampling, 
and chopping up the, the drums individually. He found ways to like stack things on top to make it his own sound. Um, and right here, I have the the, the, the splash stack. It kind of have a, a, a clap type of sound. So now, instead of having a drum machine or a pad, I can use this for like my clap. So it was like. So this is like my clap sound. So just the different things that they have out, you know, when you, when you go to the drum stores and when you're looking online, you know, just try different symbols, you know, try different combinations. Um, I'm kind of like a neat freak, so I like my drums to kind of look, be in this place. But, you know, I have a lot of variety of symbols that, you know, that I, that I, I pick and go through. If I'm playing like rock and roll, I may have, I may use a bigger, you know, bigger symbol, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying like, I'm just... For drummers, you know, it's good to just switch it up. Switch it up because you never know what you're going to get. And there's a lot of it's a lot of different options out there. Um, I'm using the, the Dark Crash 20, the Masters from, from Peisty. And I, I like this sound. So I can ride on it and I can crash. And my tone is, is a whole different thing. So there's all type of ways that you can experiment on your drum to give you different sounds. Um, I'm using these. You know, to add some different frequencies on, on like the snare drum. So this is how it sounds without the sound ring on, on the snare. It's more like a deep tone. And as y'all can see, the tam the tambourine it kind of mutes the it, it mutes the overtone and it you know it, it makes it more mute. Um so it's all type of things, all type of tricks you can you can you can add to your drum kit. Um so yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. Jump back on the, on the headphones. We got a question too. Oh, that's something like it's blaring. It's blaring in. Move closer. coming in right now cool so again i want to thank you guys for tuning in i'm gonna I'm let scratch get busy on the ones and twos but yeah so hopefully you know you guys can learn you know learn some things you know you know how to create your own sound hopefully i was able to give you all some tips as well as scratch he gave you all some stories on even the production on the producing side and also the dj side but yeah you know when you when you look to to go to the stores to to get um different drums it's just it's, it's all kind of heads it's all type of ways you can you can you can you, you can mess around and just tinker around to try to get a sound um let me check some of these questions the environment is so important about playing can you show how the drummer can transition that's a good question so we actually i'm gonna see if we could try to set up a part two can you show how a drummer can transition so is that a, is that a, is that a scratch a scratch question question? Well, the answer to that really is just is just basically like the best way for a drummer to transition with a DJ is let's say the song is playing, and the drummer just starts he just jumps in pocket, and starts playing along with the track, and then the drummer just fades out. That's how you transition. So I'm wondering. Um, let me try something. We try to move this close, so maybe I can, maybe we can try to demonstrate. And I don't even know if we like a, if, if there's a delay. It might be a delay. Yeah, but, it might um, be a delay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I want to, I want to, I want to thank you guys for, for for tuning in. You know, this is the first one, and uh, we keep y'all posted on the next one. As y'all can see at the bottom, 
October 12th is the next show. It's how do I step up my social media game? That's a good good, That's a good that's a good one. (laughs) That is a good one. Yeah, because this is this is a new day. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days we could just be drummers and we had people to do this stuff for us. But now it's like we have to be we have to promote ourselves, you know, just to stay in the game. It's like so many things, you know, that we have to do now to stay afloat. But you know, I want to want to thank you guys for all the questions. Thanks for tuning in on this first episode. Again, my apologies on on the late start. Um, you can you can you can check me at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Darby Jones. Website is RoosinRecords.com. Um, you can find Scratch, Scratch Vision, Instagram, Twitter at DJ Scratch. Yes, sir. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to PDP, DW, also um, Pisces Symbols, um, Remo Drumheads, Ahead Drumsticks, and Live Percussions. And hope, hope I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys out on the field, trying some, some new things out. Um, we had a, we got another question. Oh, Scratch, are you on Spotify? No, nah, I'm, I'm not on Spotify. I'm on Title. What's, what's your title information? Just DJ Scratch. That's it. Okay. But if anything, y'all should just Google. Google DJ Scratch and just, you know, check out this man's body of work. Like he's done a lot of a lot of amazing things for the culture, you know what I'm saying? The hip hop culture. And I'm excited and honored to have you on the show, brother. And we appreciate all the knowledge. And Thank um, you. yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully when things simmer down, us rocking out live again. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> and and the re- the reason why I'm on the reason why I'm on uh, uh hold on, let me uh, let me break this down real quick. The reason why I'm on uh, title more than any, you know, any other site is because, uh, damn, where is it? Well, anyway, um, Spotify pays artists. If you, if you do a hundred thousand streams, uh, Spotify pays you four hundred dollars wow. for one hundred thousand streams. You only get four hundred dollars. Wow. Title, you get twenty eight hundred dollars. It's, it's because title is owned by an actual artist who understands and Spotify isn't. <laughs> oh my god. With that said, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna let Scratch close it out. Actually, um, how did how did the drum sound on on, on, on the live? Is it, is it is it cool? Yes. Yeah, it sounds good. That's snare popping. It's popping. So, so Scratch, I'm gonna play something. Or you want you can start off. You can play play there. play something real quick. Let's see if it if it's actually on beat or not. Was that on beat? I can't tell. You know, I'm I'm going, you know, I'm going off of what you're doing. It, but it's the people that's listening. We got they 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 know if we were on beat or not. So you know what I can do? Uh, maybe I'll play something real quick and then you can just hop in and then I wish you drop out and then I'll, I'll play something. Okay.
scratch. We can play some breaks or whatever. <laughs> Get <laughs> ill. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So there you have it, you know what I'm saying? You got something else? No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Devin Jones, special guest DJ Scratch. Follow us on all the socials. Shout out to PDPDW. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Peace. Peace.